speaking on casting your care. And I thought, why do we cast our care to someone? We normally cast our care on somebody that we know that cares about us. Don't we? If, if someone doesn't care about us, we don't bother telling them our problems or anything. But if someone, and if we know they really love us, we tell them. And I thought, you know, that was so true, to cast your care on him because he cares for you. Let's just open in prayer again, and then we'll have Marvin come up and say something. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we praise you today. We thank you, and we just honor you, Father God. Lord, we stop and we think about where would we be if it wasn't for you, Father. And Lord, we thank you. From the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. We give you the praise and you the glory. And everything that is said here today, Lord God, may it bring glory to you and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Marvin, come on up. I'm sure he's got a good message. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> good evening. I want to say thanks to everyone for coming out. You know, it's a blessing to see these faces in here again. But I want to give the real thanks to God and all the honor and all the praise. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just giving you thanks. We love you, Lord. We honor you. We praise you. You're so awesome, Father God. When I think about what you have done in my life, Father, when you have brought me, what you have brought me through, Father, it's hard for me to contain my feelings. Father, your spirit it's like a blanket. It covers me, and I feel like a little baby. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your son that died on that cross, that took the sins of the world, that he was beaten and punished, spit on, kicked, slapped. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's so hard for me to stand up here and talk about God and not get emotional. Because my life has been a roller coaster. And when I think of where I am now to where I've been, it just feels so good. Amen. As I was laying in bed last night, Lord, he put into my spirit restoration. And it's ironic that Brother Ronnie got up here and he spoke about him and his daughter being back together again. Restoration. The action of returning something to its former condition. Amen. Whether it be your body, your mind, your soul, God can return it back to where it was. Not to talk about anyone or downplay anyone because we all go through things. And sometimes we go through it because the Lord allows us to go through it as he did with Job. Amen. Now whether you are out there on the streets taking drugs, your mind is not right, God can replace you back to your former self. Restoration. If you open your hearts and your mind and receive him and ask him, to come into your life and to help you. In the book of Job, who was a man 
And Ms. Washington, I'm sorry, but I had to touch on this. He was a man that he had plenty. He was rich, beautiful children. And back in those days, your wealth was by what you had, cows and animals and things determine your wealth. And the Bible says that Job had all type of oxen and cows and bulls and everything, but it was all taken away from him. But because of his faith, the Bible also says that in the end, where's my glasses? In the end, that Job was restored what he had lost. And I would like to read that to you. It's in the book of Job, chapter 42, verses 12 through 10. 10 through 12, I'm sorry. So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life, even more than in the beginning. For now he had 14,000 sheep. 6,000 camels, 1,000 teams of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. Job also lost his children, his daughters, and his sons. But the Bible says that God also restored restoration to Job more daughters and sons. And not only does it say that he restored them, it says that he gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. And that in all the land, there were no other women as lovely as the daughters of Job. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord, and catch this word, restored his fortune, restoration. In fact, he gave Job twice as much as before. With prayer and asking God, he will restore to where you formerly was. In the book of Job, chapter 2, verse 25, is another example. The Lord says, I will give you back what you have lost what the locusts have stripped, he will give it back. There are so many examples in this word, and I can tell you, they're all true. I'm a testimony. I will stand up in front of any crowd, on any mountain, and talk about how good God has been to me. What he's done in my life. And he, if he can do it for me, trust me, he can do it for you. God has restored the relationship with me and my sons. With my son's mother, who is here today. I'm from out of town. My little daughter, who is here today. Restoration. I also want to read to you in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 22, where it says, Jesus healed a blind man. Restoration. When they arrived, some people brought a blind man to Jesus, and they begged him to touch and heal the man. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then, spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, Can you see anything now? The man looked around. Yes, he said. I see people, but they see, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like large trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hand over the man's eyes again, as the man stared intensely, his sight was completely restored. And he could clearly see 
everything. Restoration. God is not a joke. As I say all the time, ask him to come into your life. Prove him. Don't take my word for it. I could be standing up here lying to you. But God can't lie. And his word says that if you ask, that you will receive. But you can't play them. You can't run G on them. You can't run game on them. You have to come to God with a sincere heart. I tried all that too. Going to jail. Lord, if you help me get out of here, I swear I'll straighten up. Didn't have no intentions on straightening up. And that's where I sat. And so God was ready for me to come out of there. And when I did restoration, he changed me. I'm not perfect, but I'm changed. And he's working on me daily. I just want to give one more example of restoration. Luke 5 and 12. The man with leprosy. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. So this case of leprosy, it wasn't a light case. According to the Bible, he said it was advanced. So that means it was worse than any. When the man saw Jesus, he fell to the ground, face down in the dust, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you want to make me well again, you can. Jesus reached out and touched the man, I want to, he said, be healed. And instantly, the leprosy disappeared. Amen. Praise God. God is not a joke. God is for real. The world will have you believe, as I say, that it's a mystery God, is what I've heard some people call him. You can't see him. But if you look around, you can. He's everywhere. If you look at creation alone, and I speak on this a lot, just creation, you see God in it. Because his word says that he created it. His word says that he created the heavens and the earth. He created the sun, the stars, and the moon. And if you allow God to come in, his spirit to dwell, you will see with that spiritual eye that God is real. You can't see him in the flesh. It's in spirit. It's by spirit and by faith that God moves. The great deceiver will have you believe that he doesn't exist. Look at this world today. Look at this world. It's a mess. Because Satan has fooled the masses. Blinded. Ask Jesus to come into your life and be for real. Ask him. It's just a, it's a regular way of life. Minus all the hurt, the pain, the nonsense. Not saying that we're not going to go through things, because we are. But through those things, there's a lesson. And there's growth. As I say, I did 10 years and three months in prison. You think I didn't go through something? But I can stand up here and tell you, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And I mean that from my heart. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. God allowed me to grow up mentally and allowed me to know that he is real in that situation. And I needed every second of it. 
Because if I would have came home one minute earlier, I can guarantee you I would have been the same person I was before I went in. Restoration. God bless, and I thank y'all for listening to me. Thank you. God is such a loving, loving God. And this morning when I was listening to casting your care, casting your care, there's always something that we have to do in order to receive. You know, a lot of people come to Jesus Christ and they, they say, Lord, take my life. I'm sorry for what I've done. And then they sit back and they say, well, I'm a Christian now. Everything's cool. Everything is cool. I'm on my way to heaven. And they do absolutely nothing. There are Sunday-going people that just go to church on Sunday. Some don't even go on a Sunday. They put on a pretense. And I, when I was reading about casting your care because he cares for you, I thought, now, it's very, very hard sometimes to take the care and the burdens that we carry, and we all got them. There's not one sitting here that doesn't have a burden or a care. And what we try to do is we try to use our own mind to figure it all out. You ever do that? I do all the time. I, I try and I say, well, maybe if I took this road or if I did this thing or if I talked to this person or if I did this or called this person, everything would just work out better. And so that's what I do. And the thing is, God says, no, don't lean on your own understanding. Cast your care because I care for you. It's like a parent that loves their children. If you love your children, you're going to want to help them. You're going to want to see what's best for them, right? And for those that don't have children, it might be your pet, or it might be something else, and it might be, might be a parent, right? Amen. <laughs> and you're going to say, I want what's best for them, not for myself. I want what's best, and if they would only come to me and cast their care, cast your care, come and talk to me about what you're going through. Come and talk to me so I can carry your burden. I had a mama, and I probably told you this a hundred times before, but she was so good to me. Both my dad and mom were good to me. And I would go, I remember once going, I had got four brand new tires on my car. And I'm like, I'm speaking to the guy and I'm saying, well, I've got to pay a little bit at a time because I really don't have a lot of money. And I had some money, but it was just I didn't want to pay the full shot all at one time. So it was like, just let me, you know, can I make payments? He says, yes, yes, you can make payments, not a problem. And here the one day, the next month, in fact, I went to make a payment. And the guy brings out his little book, you know, and he says, oh, wait a minute. And he flips through it. He says, oh, that bill's been paid. Amen. And I said, no, it can't be paid. <laughs> I haven't made a payment yet. It can't be paid. And he says, it's paid. And I said, well, how much was paid on it? Well, it's paid in full. It's paid in full. And it's like, no, there's got to be a mistake. No, I'm sorry, ma'am, there's no mistake. And I says, let me see the paper. So I grabs the paper and I read, and I see my mother had went in and paid it for me. And it was like, Lord, you know, I didn't even cast that care on Mama, but she paid it for me. Why? Because she loved me. And how much more does our Father love us? How much more? He has a plan for every one of us. He has a plan. He has it all set up. This is your destiny. You hear T.D. Jake speak of this all the time. This is your destiny. Some might get back what they've lost. And there's others, and I know them, and they're wonderful people, and they go through life and they say, Lord, what, you know, is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? What's going to happen here and what's going to happen there? And God says, just trust me. Trust me. I think trust is one of the hardest things to do because you're, you're actually, our human nature is to take care of business ourselves. I was always like that. i got to take care of my own business. I can do it. You know, it's wonderful to have three babies in the house here. <laughs> Isn't it? They're so precious. They are so precious. <laughs> three triplets, little triplets, they're just so precious. 
But you know, God says, cast your care on me. Let me work it out. Let me work it out. And sometimes it doesn't work out the way you think it's going to work out. But the Lord says, the plans I have for you are perfect. They're perfect. Sure, you might be going through this little thing right now, and yeah, it might not look, circumstances don't look like what they should maybe, but I'm in control of those circumstances. But you've got to let me be in control. Just like Job, like Bam said, you know, it's like putting your trust in him, and God will restore what the locust has taken. God will restore it. Maybe not the way you think, but he will restore it. Job lost his first a lot of children. They were lost and killed. They were all killed. Can you, be a, can you imagine being a parent and lose your children like that, all of them? Wow, it's devastating, isn't it? I remember a lady in Pennsylvania when I lived there, and she brought me a box of clothes, and she said, this is my daughter's. I only had one daughter. And she says she was on her way to university, and she had come for the summer to spend the summer with me. And she says she was on her way back to college or university. And she says she was killed in a car accident. And she says, Anne, it's taken two to three years for me even to go into her bedroom and pick up her stuff. I can't do it. And she had called me ahead of time and said, I've got a box of clothes to bring. And I said, yeah, bring them, not thinking anything. But she stood in front of me with this really face that was devastated. She was devastated. And I felt her hurt. And she opened up the box and she says, here's some of her sweaters and here's some of her clothes and here's some of this. And I just want to give it to somebody else that may need it. And then she walked away and she said, thank you. And you know, as she walked out there, I thought, how devastating. Her only child and she lost it. But you know what she had that some of us don't have? She had a faith in God and a trust in God. Even though she lost everything, she had a trust in God. And she cast her care to him. She still had the pain inside her heart. She still had all the memories, all the memories of what her and her daughter went through and everything. But she had cast her care on the Lord. She had cast them. And today I would say to you just a short thing. If you are going through something today and you say, Lord, I don't know if this is right or not. I don't know, you know, circumstances look this way and, and I don't know if I can cope. I don't have the money maybe to pay this bill or I'm maybe being evicted or, or maybe not that. Maybe I've been to the doctor and the doctor has said, well, uh, you don't, there's not much hope here. Not much hope. And you're saying, Lord, what do I do? You're, maybe your friends and family have turned their back on you. And you're saying, Lord, what do I do? And God says, cast your care and let me work it out. Cast your care. Just cast it. Just give it to him. Write it down on a piece of paper. Write it down on a piece of paper and say, here, Lord, here's, here it is. Here's all my problems. Here's all my issues. Take me, Lord, and mold me into what you would have me be. You know, Job got his blessings back, and you know why? Because he was a man of God, and he stood strong. And you know why? Because he loved God in spite of everything around him, and he put God first in everything. He put God first, and that's why the blessings come. So you can come and you can say, well, yes, Lord, I love you. And yes, God, I want to serve you. And yes, God, I am going to be faithful to you. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that for you. And God says, but you know, I'm not looking at what you do. I'm looking at your heart. I'm looking at your heart. And your heart's a little bit tainted there. Because you're not giving me all of your heart. You're not giving it up. And that's the only way to receive the blessings. And it's the only thing that you can do to walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ. It's the only thing. And if you expect something else, you're, you're dead wrong. 
because Jesus says, come unto me as you are. Come unto me as you are. Cast your care upon me because I care about you. I want to give you a good life full of peace and joy. Now, I'm not going to keep it long because it's hot down here. It's surprising it's hot, eh? Because it's a basement. <laughs> but if there's anybody that would like to come up for prayer and say, Lord, I want to rededicate my life to you. God, I messed it up. I messed it up so many times. I want to come to you, Father. I want to know that if I, if I die today, that I will go to be with you. You know, heaven is real, and heaven's going to be a heck of a lot hotter than what it is down here. The Bible tells me that. <laughs> and if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you're headed that way. You're headed that way to keep it real. So if there's anybody that needs prayer, anybody that needs to get right with God, anybody that says, well, last night I went out and I did such and such, and I did such and such, and... And, you know, okay, I'm not perfect, and this flesh is weak, and yes, 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 and I know what you're talking about. I've been there. But I also know that you need to get right with God, and you need to ask him to take over. And then when he takes over, you can cast your care. Here's all the babies coming up. They're so precious. They're so big and beautiful. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just love you today. We thank you today. And Father God, everyone that's come up, we ask that you bless them, Father God. We give you the glory and you the praise, Father God. We just love you today, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we can cast our care and that you will take our care and you will take care of it, that we can be set free. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, we ask you to bless everybody that's come up, Father. Lord, just give them the desires of their heart right now, Lord God. And Lord, if there's anything in their heart that is troubling them or holding them in bondage, Father God, we ask that you open their eyes. And Lord, we just ask that you touch their lives, Lord God. Be with each person that has come up because each person has their own issues going on, Father God. And Lord, those that sit in the seats, Father God, we ask that you be with them too, Father God, and help them and bless them, Lord. Lord, mold us into what you would have us be so that we can fulfill our total destiny with you, Father God. We just give you the praise and all the glory. We ask you to bless this food, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen.